Her styling is completely out of whack. This didn't really hit the spot. Hello my beautiful light brides. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. Today I am out of drag, but I am the brightest crane in the box. If you are new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Despite being out of drag, I am wearing my merch, which you can buy in the description below. Now, uh, today we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race, All Stars 9, Episode 2, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And make sure to tune in all the way to the end where we let you know who had the best and worst looks of the weeks. For this week, we are having a ball, but not any ordinary ball. We are having a paint ball. That is right, we are getting three looks inspired by paint. First, we have monochromatica, where the queens must give us a look that is all one color and monochromatic. Second is drag imitates art, where the queen must give us a look inspired by a famous artwork. And third is paintball extravaganza, where the queens must create a look in the workroom uh, using white fabric and then paint it to create a custom one-of-a-kind eleganza look made in a very short period of time. So not only is this a ball, but this is a sewing challenge. Girl, we got eight queens, three looks a piece, that's 24 looks. Buckle up, this is gonna be a long episode. So. Without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up, it's Angeria Paris Van Michaels, and Angeria is coming in in lime green. Now, lime green is a little bit of a choice of colors. Some people love it, some people hate it. Personally, as my name is Neon Noir, you know I love a good neon green color, so I was really excited for this. Angeria decides to come out in this lime green mesh, sort of a bodysuit with this frilly back dress and this big blonde hair. It is definitely giving you alien vibes. Firstly, I was so weirded out by this one. I was confused. And let me explain. First up, the outfit. The outfit just looks like a bodysuit. And she said that she loves this color and it looks good on her. And I don't know that it looks good on her. I feel like this could have used a little bit more of a contrasting color. So I'm okay with the lime green, but I think you did need some a little bit of like other green tones in there to really like create those illusions of like what is mesh, what isn't. I also feel like another fabric uh, would have added to it so that you would have had like different pieces in different fabrics. So it would have all come together a little bit more. But the bodysuit is okay. But then she's paired it with this like dress thing. And I'm like, why? And I know why. Because they always get red on the runway for only having a bodysuit, she clearly wanted to add more. And she added this like dress part, which to me does not match at all and was a complete miss. Then she paired it with this blonde hair. And this is the honestly some of the most beautiful hair I've seen. I love, love, love this wig. I just don't think this wig and this outfit go together. They feel like they come from completely different universes. This hair is giving me much more like queen princess vibes. I think this would have looked good on like a baby blue if you were going with an ice queen look. But with this look, I think you need like crazy ass ponytail. You need some black, you need some neon. I feel like you need something that's gonna give you that raver gamer girl vibes. And this is not that. All in all, I am so confused and that is why it is gonna be a drab. <laughs> Next up is Chanel, and Chanel is coming out in kinky pink. She's coming out with this long pink gown with matching gloves and matching hair. On top of it, she's got this bone cage detailing with big shoulders and big hip pads, and is then encrusted in rhinestones and feathers. Now, Chanel is known for going over the top and too much, but I actually think that this is just the perfect amount. First up, this color looks exquisite on her, and I think this was a really good choice for her. On top of it, yes, she's got a lot going on, but it doesn't overwhelm it. Sometimes when you put too many pieces, your eye doesn't know where to look, but this one is really smart and well done. The dress underneath is so plain, so your 
eye focuses on the cage and the cage doesn't have too many things on it so that you really do get to see the structure on top of it. All in all, it's a really glamorous look. It's got a lot of texture into it and it is very well done. And that is why she is going to get a bow. It's Roxy Andrews, and Roxy Andrew is coming out in ravenous red. She's coming out in this red dress with all of the wires coming through it and the braiding. She's got this long flowing dress part and this really big hair. I will say that red is Roxy's color. I will say that red is a gorgeous color on her. I remember seeing her with her thick and juicy look and I thought that was a genius. So when I see red on her here, I was like, oh, of course she's gonna choose red. Now let's look at this look. I don't know about this look. I see where she was going with all of these pieces and these things happening. I just don't know that all of these shapes necessarily flatter her body. I feel like had the shapes like really went with her curvatures of her body, I think it would have really helped. And I don't like to see the exposed wire. I feel like had they all been done in this like hair braid thing, it would have really elevated it. This feels like an 1.0 version of this look and not an All Stars 9 version of this look. And that is sort of the problem. All in all, this one is not my favorite and is definitely gonna have to be a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Gottmik, and Gottmik is coming out in Donatella purple. She is wearing this purple jacket with this purple corset, with these purple pants, with these purple shoes, and this purple hood. She's also matched it with a purple hair that is slicked back. She said that she is wearing a head-to-toe Versace look, and I generally don't like when queens use designer looks, and I say this because they always look a little bit pedestrian, a little bit real girl, and I like my drag queens to look like a drag, but this one definitely hits the spot. I love the vibe of this one. She looks really cool, like a purple matrix vibe, so I actually think that this time the designer works. It all looks put together and all looks like a look, but I think that also has to do with the pairing, the makeup with the hair and the lip. It really helps elevate that overall vibe, and honestly, a vibe is what I'm looking for. All in all, I I love this look and it is definitely going to be a bow. Next up, it's Nina West and Nina West is coming out in pink. She's coming out with this biggest pink hat with all of the feathers on it, this pink bodysuit and this pink waist dress thing. Now I will say I was not expecting this from Nina West. This is yet again another look where I think she's actually turned it out. This whole thing is about this giant hat, which is genius because it is so oversized, so ridiculous, so drag, and just that little bit of campy that Nina West it needs. She then paired it with the bodysuit, which is super plain and super boring, which I was felt with a little bit of a disappointment. I felt like that could have used some additional detail into it, but I didn't really mind it because it was about the hat and this skirt, and so you can't have too much going on everywhere else. She then got this gag with this piece that's coming up on the front of her face, which I totally didn't even get. So I'm just gonna ignore that and just look at the look. All in all, I think this is good, especially given it's coming from Nina West. I was expecting her to come into this season being very bad. So I kind of have to like hold my breath and make me second guess myself. Is Nina West going to be a fashion girl? Because on episode one, she did pretty good. All in all, I think this is really great and it is definitely gonna be a <laughs> Next up, it's Miss Vanjie, and Miss Vanjie's coming out in Michelle Green. She's coming out in this uh, green little hoochie mama dress uh, with all of the rhinestones and the little buckles. She then paired it with a black hair with this silver streak in it. She said she's actually giving you Michelle Visage, and you totally see it. This is an exact replica of a dress that Michelle Visage wore, um, but she did it in green. She's also paired it with this black hair with this silver streak, which is Michelle Visage's signature hair. So you immediately get the reference. And the reason why she decided to go green instead of the original black is because Michelle hates the color green. So this was supposed to be a little like wink, wink. 
hint hint at that. I think it was really intelligent and I think fans will really like something like that. Obviously Michelle likes something like that as well. Uh, the only problem I have is, is this monochromatic? And in my view, no, it's not. Uh, because the hair isn't green, because the green is literally just on the dress, I feel like it is not green enough. And this is where she obviously went more concept and less actual runway. Then you look at the dress, it is just a simple Hoochie Mama dress. Now we love a Hoochie Mama dress, but this is the runway of All Stars 9. I am expecting so, so much more. So although I can appreciate the concept and I can appreciate like the way she was thinking about things, it is not at the level I need it to be and that is why I am gonna go ahead and give her a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Plastique Tiara, and Plastique Tiara is coming out in Gummo Crimson. Now, girl, when they said that, I was like, this ain't crimson, this is red. But the only reason you ain't saying that it's red is because some other had red before. You just wanted to switch it up. So let's just call a spade a spade. She said she is coming out in this red dress that is inspired by Vietnam because she is channeling her heritage. She said it is red with gold, the gold representing the star on the Vietnamese flag. And I was thinking to myself, girl, you are stretching. You could just say this is a red dress with influences of Vietnam, and I wouldn't believe you. This whole story is a bit too much for me and a bit unrealistic, but let's get into the gown. Regardless of what I think about the story, the gown is actually really, really good. I love the cutouts. I love the shapes. I love the way it sits on her. I love that it's got this oriental feel to it. It definitely feels like something only she can do. And it looks extremely well made. And it is for all of those reasons that I'm gonna go ahead and give Miss Plastic Tierra a pop. Next up, we have Georges, and Georges is coming out in Kush Green. She said she is channeling one of her favorite things. Now, I think this is so smart because Georges always talks about, you know, smoking, so she decided to make a whole look inspired by smoking. I think that uh, the bodysuit with the corset looks really good with these leaves in just the, you know, strategic places, kind of giving you that, like, uh, Eve fantasy, but making it a little bit more adult. Um, on top of it, she's paired it with this beautiful hair that's also in the shape of a leaf. And I think this is really gorgeous and really genius. I love, love, love the hair. I almost want to get one made in a maple leaf for myself, you know, to channel my inner Canadiana. But the part that I have a little bit of struggle with is that I was expecting a little more. And by that, I mean, I feel like this needs some sort of back piece, either like some wings or a piece that comes up or a big jacket or something, because it really just feels like a bodysuit. And Georgia's being so tiny, I feel like she needs to like own the space a little bit more. Imagine this with like a giant jacket that's got a giant train on it and it's got all of those funny leaves all over it. I think that that could be a really fun. All in all, I don't feel like she went far enough, but it is by no means a bad look, and that is why she is getting a pop. Next, we are moving to the second category, Drag Imitates Art. And first up, we have Angeria Paris Van Michaels, and she is giving you a reinterpretation of Mondrian. Now, I look at this and I think to myself, Ooh. Boring. I think Mondrian is such a toss away look because Mondrian is known for its color blocking and we've seen so many people do color blocking. I feel like I've seen this dress, this look, and I'm thinking to myself, Angie, really, what are you doing? Show me something innovative. And this wasn't innovative. On top of it, her styling is completely out of whack. She decided that for her styling, she wanted to go with more of this like glamour. So she got a little fur and her little like up to, and I'm like, Girl, no. With such a plain dress, the styling matters so, so much. And I think that what would have worked a little bit better here is if she did a 1920s styling, just because that would have connected it back to the original artwork, because that's when the artwork was originally made. All in all, this was so middle of the road, so basic, so uninspired, and definitely a drab. <laughs>
Next up, we have Chanel, and Chanel is channeling Hakusai. Now, Hakusai, you probably don't know the artist or the art piece, but you've definitely seen it. It is these big Japanese-style waves. She's decided to do this blue dress in her signature mermaid style with these big, oversized uh, waves coming off of it. She's then paired it with this hair that feels like it is just floating in the air onto one side, and I'm like, yes. This is how you do it. it. This feels so drag. It is so over the top. And what I really appreciated is the scale. She didn't go with these like little details of little small uh, waves. She decided to make it a moment and really capture it all over the place. If there was one thing I would have altered, I would have loved to see that all of these uh, white waves would have had like black detailing around them to kind of give you the style of the original artwork. But once they zoom in and you see the details of the dress, you realize that the blue all has this shading and these waves in it which adds that extra layer and makes me even love it even more all in all i think this is a fabulous dress and definitely gonna get a bow. next up is roxy andrews and for her artist she chose salvador dali she decided to do this salvador dali melted clock look with this mustache to channel the artist himself now dali is a great choice of an artist there is so many ways you can do this actually drag race spain had a whole runway inspired by dali so i was expecting big things the problem is is this didn't really hit the spot now before you get mad let me explain i love this clock moment this is really giving you a an idea but then actually if you look at the dress it is just a dress made with a salvatore dali print on it like it doesn't really add anything i wish the garment was more in the essence of dali that meaning like it got you more of that surrealism into the dress as opposed to just an artwork printed on a dress and that's where i was just like mm. She then decided to pair this with this mustache, and I get that it's channeling the original artist, but for me, this feels a little bit gimmicky coming from somebody like Roxy Andrews, because Roxy is that pageant girl, so I like to see her in pageant perfection, and this mustache makes it feel a little bit more like artsy, club kitty, and she's not that queen, and it just feels flat. I feel like had she done the mustache, it really needed to be like much bigger, and then like maybe connected it to some like headpiece or something to really make it a moment. Now it just feels like stuck on at the last minute of like a cute idea. That being said, it's not bad. And, I, and as I said, I really love this chest piece. And for the chest piece alone, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a soft bow. <laughs> we have Gottmik and Gottmik is channeling Edward Moon and the scream ah! that is right as uh, she is coming out as the infamous painting of the screaming man now on Roxy's I literally said I do not like when people just take the artwork and print it on a gown and then Gottmik comes out with this one and I'm like okay the part I don't like is what I just said, but then after that, she decided to take it one step further and rhinestone the heck out of this thing. This thing is rhinestoned to the gods. Like, I've never seen something rhinestoned so badly. And the rhinestones make it go from this basic printed dress to a beautiful, beautiful dress. And then I kind of ate my own words. So I feel like maybe there is a way that you can do a printed dress if you bring it to the next level. And Gottmik definitely brought it to the next level on this. On top of it, she decided to do it with like no hair moment, which I think is really cool because it references the Scream himself who doesn't have hair. And she's done with like a little bit of a paler face, again, channeling him. So you can see that she really thought about this. And honestly, she just looks stunning. This is a gorgeous gown and probably weighs a ton because that's a lot, a lot of stones. All in all, this is 100% gonna be a bow. Next, we have Nina West. Nina West is channeling Thomas Finland. Now, I didn't know who Thomas Finland was, so I did have to look him up, but Thomas Finland does queer erotic male art, and therefore she was channeling the gay cruising culture. Now, the first thing I will say is I like that she chose an artist that is not so obvious and that it can go into a different direction and teaching us children, yeah, I'll consider myself a child in this, uh, about who this artist is and how important they are. The problem I have is with the gown. 
male cruising culture and butch femme, that sort of thing has so many beautiful things you can do with it. There's buckles, there's leather, there's so many pieces you can do. And she did this. I didn't get this. And the thing about cruising culture is those pieces exist in the world. You can just like go out and buy them. You don't even need to make a custom look with it. And if you are gonna make a custom look with it, it's gotta be better than the stuff you can buy in the stores. And honestly, this isn't. I feel like she's trying to do that mask femme thing, but it's not really landing. She's trying to do that hard, hard edge thing, and it's not really landing. It all just feels a little bit discombobulated, and it is not for me. And that is why I am gonna go ahead and give it a draft. <laughs> Next up, it's Miss Vanjie, and Miss Vanjie is channeling Van Gogh's Starry Night. Now, she's coming out in this blue and yellow frilly top thing with this very ornate hair. First off, the hair looks uh, gorgeous and impeccably made. Miss Vanjie said that she wanted to keep it sexy and keep it her vibe. That is why she went with this sort of silhouette. And I'm like, okay, cool. I don't actually mind the silhouette. The problem is, is if I didn't know it was Starry Night, there was a 0% chance I was gonna figure it out. And she simplified this painting to literally two colors. And I don't think people would get it. I wish that had she done this silhouette, she would have done a lot more into this one piece that would have really brought it up. The other problem I have with this dress is that I remember Chelsea Boy on Make Up Your Mind doing a Van Gogh inspired dress and that was so stunning that this in comparison looks like peanuts and which makes me think that maybe Chelsea Boy needs to get onto a global all-star. I'm just saying because if you look at these two looks, Chelsea's was a million times better. All in all, I feel like this didn't really meet the challenge, didn't get the essence of the art piece and really was basic and that is why she is getting a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Plastic Tiara, who is channeling Kusama. She's coming out with this yellow and black polka dot moment that wraps all around this black dress. She's paired it with this orange hair that's also got rhinestone polka dots in it. Now, I love that she went with Kusama. I think Kusama is a really cool artist and you have so much playroom with it. When this dress came out, I was honestly a little bit disappointed. Now, let me explain. This isn't a bad dress by any means. You definitely understood who the artist was, which is really important because we kind of miss that with someone like Vanjie. So you understood it, but Kusama is much more of a maximalist. So I really felt like this whole dress should have been the polka dots and the yellow. And this has a lot of that black in it, which you don't really see in her artwork. On top of it, one of the things that Kusama does a lot is pumpkins. And so I wish that she had actually made the dress a little bit more pumpkin shaped to give you that artist vibe. Then she decided to pair it with this hair and this hair is a beautiful, immaculate and like super, super stunning. I just don't know what this has to do with Kusama. Kusama is like iconic for her bob hair piece so I feel like she should have done a bob with this look because then it would have channeled the artist again really bringing it up to the next level with all of that being said is it a bad look absolutely not this is actually a really great look I just know Kusama very well and I had so many great ideas for it and I feel like she really didn't take it to that next next level and plastic tiara is that next next level queen despite all that being said I'm still gonna go ahead and give her a Bye. Next up is George's and George's is coming out in this like jacket with all of these crazy colors on it This hat with all of these crazy colors on it And then she said that she is Picasso when she first said that I go, huh? I did not understand it at all then they flashed up the painting that she was supposed to be and I'm like, oh this is one of those ones that you need to know the artwork, you need to see the artwork to then get it. But once you see it and you look at it, you realize actually there is a lot of reference and she actually did a really good job interpreting it. But you need to know. I think the whole look is definitely a vibe and you can definitely get a lot of uses out of it because it is not so literal and not so obvious to most people, which maybe is gonna work out better for her because she's gonna get some use out of this look and she's not gonna have to like just get rid of it. That's sort of like one of the problem when you do a show like Drag Race, you spend a lot of money on these looks and then some of them you don't actually get to use again because 
where are you gonna wear it, right? This one, she's gonna get some use out of this look. The only problem I have with this look is, is, is missing that extra oomph, that extra va 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 voom piece to it. I think this would have looked so much better had she painted her whole face blue, then it would have really felt like way more artistic. But then when you're doing it in a ball, I totally understand that you can't just like change your whole face, you know what I mean? The other thing, I think it could have used some stripes and some rhinestones, but you know, a girl likes some rhinestones. We are drag queens at the end of the day, right? So uh, we like a little shimmer shimmer. All in all, this is still a pretty good look and good enough to get a bow. And now we enter our third and final category, which is paintball eleganza. First up, we have Angeria. And Angeria is coming out in this asymmetrical puffy sleeved uh, dress with these two toned patterns in it. She said that there's a little bit of lime green and a little bit of yellow. Now I will say that the dress itself is really well made. I think this silhouette works really well on Angeria. It's kind of got a little bit more of those Southern Belle vibes, which we classically know from Angeria. And I wish she would bring more into because I really love this on her. Um, she did decide to go with a lime green and a yellow. So on TV, it doesn't really show because the contrast isn't big enough. Maybe in real life, you do see that. I personally would have liked to see a little bit more punch, a little bit more paint. This is a painting challenge, not only a design challenge. So I think that this could have used a little bit more like graphic lines or artwork on it to really elevate it up to the next level. Honestly, Angeria looks good and design challenges are so hard. So just for the construction alone, I have to go ahead and give her a soft bow. <laughs> Next up, we have Chanel, and Chanel is coming out with everything and the kitchen sink. She said, you wanted a color challenge, I am gonna give you a color challenge. She's done this corset with all of these things glued on it. First, let's talk about the positives, her hair and her makeup. Her hair was such a genius choice. First of all, the blue picks up the blues in the garment. Second of all, it is like slick back, so it really gives the moment to the dress because with that kind of dress, you kind of need something a little bit simpler on the head. Then her makeup, she's picked up all the colors of her dress and put it into her eye makeup, and it just looks like painterly onto her face. I also like all of the different gradients that she's done on all of the pieces. I think this must have taken her quite some time and definitely looks very artistic and very well done. The problem I have is I just feel like there's too many pieces. I think that she could have lost like some of the pieces or maybe done some cutouts in different places to really like make your eye a little bit calm because I don't know where to look. And because I don't know where to look, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Roxy Andrews. And Roxy Andrews is coming out in this like white jacket that has got this black ombre on Twitch. She's paired it with this black bob. As she walks down the runway, she rips over the jacket and you see that she's got a top and pants. That is right, she made three pieces in the runway. And I'm like, girl, that takes some skills. You can see that Roxy knows how to sew because this ain't easy to sew. On top of it, the taste on this is so, so good. You know, remember when I was saying with Angeria, I was, didn't see the transition into the gradient? This is how you do it. You definitely see the transition into the gradient. As if the pieces weren't great on their own, the styling on this really takes it to the next level. This bob gives you this like woman going out on the town, but she is like the owner of the art gallery. And then she's got all of these little red pops all over her dress to give you like black, white, and red all over. I think this is so well done, so genius. I can see people wanting something like this now that they've seen it on Drag Race, and that is why it is 100% gonna be a bow. Next up, it's Gottmik, and Gottmik is coming out in this half white, half red dress with these tie-up detailings and this big hair. Now, when she was making the dress, I wasn't really sure where this was going uh, because it felt very arts and crafty. And I think that once you look at the artwork, it definitely looks really cool, but it does have a little bit of that arts and craft feel to it. The thing that Gottmik does well is her styling and the way she puts things together. Although it does feel a little bit over the top, she really just put that over the top into that one section. And um, so it really gives you that contrast between the crazy to the really simple. And that creates this beauty. 
And then on top of it, when it comes to the dress itself, it's got these little like crisscross detailing, which makes it go from a simple dress to something a little bit more interesting. But more important than all, she goes, you know what? I have this simple dress. I'm going to give you my most luscious, most expensive, most craziest hair to really put this look together. And I think that that's really what made it. The hair was so spectacular and actually works really well with this look. And it really makes you have a full vibe. And I love, love, love this vibe. And when it comes to the runway, it is a vibe that you're selling. And since I love this vibe, it is definitely going to be a bow. Next up, it's Nina West. And Nina West is coming out in this a simple dress with these polka dot colors all over her, this rainbow corset, and this like art pop hair. And I'm like, girl, what a mess. Oh my God. I think that this is so poorly done. She said she doesn't know how to paint, but girl, she didn't even know how to paint a perfect circle. Even the little circles in different places don't even match. She said that she is giving you paintball fantasy because it is a paintball and I'm like no 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 if you wanted to do circles I totally okay with you doing circles but at least then channel something like a Damien Hirst which has got these like really purposeful circles and I think that would have been really good also you're a drag queen you know that small details go a long way had she done them really nice those circles they could have looked more purposeful she then paired it with this rainbow corseted body and I'm like why why are we adding something else to it again that could have been again just polka dots and made it all one or if, if you wanted to different size polka dots on the the middle piece then it would have given you this like weird juxtaposition of small circles and big circles which i think would have been super cute she then paired it with this hair which i get is like a reference to art pop hair but it again just makes it look cheaper i get that it is more of a campy style but when you have such a eh look, you can really make up with it with some like extravagant over the top hair. We saw Gottmik do that. That's what she could have done. She could have done like this big sculptural hair piece, pulled something, her best hair from her closet and tried to bring this up. Instead, this hair just really took it into like clown direction. All in all, this is a complete mess and definitely gonna be a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Miss Vanjie, and Miss Vanjie is coming out in this little dress with these gloves and this flowing fabric. She decided to channel her Puerto Rican heritage by painting a Puerto Rican flag on the chest and stars all along the bottom. Now, I think this had a lot of potentials, but I don't know that it necessarily got there. The dress itself, the way it was constructed, I think is perfectly fine. She's got all the right pieces onto it, but the artwork that you put onto the dress really can take it from basic to next level. I like the stars that are on her dress. I like that it's got some movement. I didn't necessarily see Puerto Rico, but I did see like you USA, uh, which is totally fine as well. Um, but then the artwork on her chest is just not at the same level. I feel like had this been all red with like just one or two big stars on it, I feel like this could have really taken it up a notch. She then paired it with this blonde hair, which honestly moves really well and looks gorgeous on her. But for a challenge like this, I think you needed a little bit more of a bigger hair, a bigger statement piece. Even if she had done the exact same hair, but in red, it would have given you that more like that Vixen vibe. So I think that that, uh, that could have really helped overall. All in all, this fell a little short for me. So for Miss Vanjie, yet again, it is gonna have to be a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Plastique Tiara, and Plastique Tiara is coming out in this a white uh, dress that she painted almost like this nude body on, on it with this big jacket that is frilly and long and over the top, which is pink and it's got cherry blossoms all over it. She then paired it with this beautiful coiffed hair. Now, see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. When you have a simple piece with some right styling, it can go a long way. That hair made this whole thing feel so elevated. I love this jacket. It is so over the top, so drag, and you get to see this beautiful artwork on it. 
The dress underneath is super cool. I feel like the dress in the middle just doesn't match the coat. And I also feel like this idea of like this photocopy dress has been seen and mass produced a lot. So that was not as inspiring for me. I wish she would have taken this exact same idea, but instead of doing it in black, done it with the sort of same cherry blossom stems and little leaves, I think that would have really connected them together and maybe done it even in magenta. I feel like that could have brought the, the all the pieces together. That being said, this is still a gorgeous look and you can see that she put thought and time into it um, and she looks gorgeous. That is why despite my critique, she is still getting a five. Next up, it's Georges, and Georges is coming in in this long skirt, which she stenciled all the little details onto it. She's got these big puffy sleeves, which she also stenciled, and she's paired it with this plain white bra, which she literally just took off the rack. Now, I know Georges got critiqued for having this bra so plain, but I actually don't mind it. With all of these patterns and everything going on, I do feel like my eye needs a little bit of like a rest, and this bra works really well. Unfortunately, the bra looks like a bra, and that's sort of the problem. Even if she had just covered it in white fabric or just rhinestone a few little details onto it, I think it would have taken it up just that extra notch and not make it feel like a simple bra. The outfit itself is cute. It works. Um, it doesn't really wow me. It doesn't really give me that moment. It is definitely safe. And on a sewing challenge, I am okay with safe. All in all, very middle of the road and therefore going to get a soft bow. <laughs> And that is it for this episode. Girl, I told you we had a lot of looks to get into and we told you there was some queens. I will say that I love a ball. I think a ball is so genius. I actually always like when the balls happen at the beginning of the season because you get to see more looks from queens. Um, and so this was the way to do it. I also liked this twist on the show-in challenge with the artwork because you can kind of like camouflage your bad sewing with some great artwork, which is what I would probably be doing. But um, what did you guys think of this episode? Let me know in the comments below. But enough about me, let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. This week for my fabs and drabs, I am going to be rating them as a set because they are doing a ball. I am not gonna be doing them as an individual. So this week for the set, my drabs of the week goes to Nina West. Although I loved her first look, her second and third look were just a complete miss and therefore she really couldn't recuperate. Girl, my premonitions are coming true with Nina West. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week has to go to Gottlieb. Gottlieb is the only queen that I literally gave five, five, five stars to across the board. I know some people are probably going to think that's a little bit controversial, but I thought all of her looks fit the theme and they worked really well on the runway and um, I just loved it. So she gets it. Y'all, that is it for this episode. What did you think of the episode? Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Well, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I am trying to get to 10,000 followers. I know, crazy idea, but you know, a girl can dream. So if you haven't already hit that subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in my next episode. Bye-bye.